All right, so I hope everybody can hear me okay. Adrian heard me fine, so that's a good sign. Uh, my name is James. I am the owner of Apex Branding and Design, uh, which is a, a small branding and design agency. Um, we have zero employees. We, uh, When I say we, I mean I uh, do business by uh, hiring from a network of uh, professional contractors. So um, when I need graphic design work, I know I know graphic designers that I can go to and I need development work, you know, copywriting, video stuff. Um, I, I contract all that out to people that um, I know and that I've worked with um, and who I know uh, do good work. And uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, branding. So um, as you can see from the title, uh, great marketers are full of BS. I, the reason I like that title is because uh, there's a lot of um, videos and, and things that you can watch that will kind of pit branding against marketing. And, you know, they'll be like, oh, branding's not important. You should focus on marketing or marketing's not important. You should focus on branding. And I think that that's silly. Um, I think that branding and marketing, um, they're not the same thing, but they definitely go hand in hand. I mean, you, you'd be foolish to ignore either one. Um, you, you You really can't even have a business without without marketing. So some of these people who are trying to say that you should forget all about marketing and focus on branding, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but I do believe that the most effective marketers are the ones who um, have some kind of understanding as far as uh, branding is concerned. So um, even if it's, you know, not a super in-depth knowledge, uh, just, just the fact that you're thinking about branding while you're operating your business is going to put you uh, one step ahead of a lot of other businesses. So um, the first thing I want to do um, in this presentation is we're going to talk about um, what is uh, marketing, and then we're going to talk about uh, what is branding. We're going to talk about uh, we're going to do some sales funnel shenanigans. Um, we're going to talk about how to begin building your brand, um, and then hopefully there'll be some time for questions. Um, so, you know, the the this we only have an hour today, so. Um, you know, you could talk for hours and hours about branding and how to build your brand. So the the focus of this particular presentation is going to be um, explaining what branding even is and explaining why it's important. Um, and then there'll be some resources which will help you um, to, uh, you know, craft your own brand or offer branding as a service to your clients if you're um, in the service-based industry. Um, so let's go ahead and start by talking about marketing. So Something I did about a year or two ago, um, just out of curiosity, I wanted to find out, you know, what people thought marketing was. And so I asked a question on LinkedIn. I just said, what is marketing? And I received the, a bunch of replies and I took about six or seven, I think. Um, and I'm going to show them to you here. So somebody said marketing is communicating a product's value. Somebody else says it's how you are putting your product on the market for people to buy. Um, this is a long one. Someone says it's a multi-stage process in which an entity introduces themselves to people with the intent of enticing them to do something that benefits the entity. Uh, calling on your audience to answer a question that they have already been asking themselves. Uh, somebody says marketing is not guessing what your customer is interested in um, without actually talking to your customer. And finally, somebody said it's the process of planning a combination of efforts designed to lead a person, thought or action from one place to the next. And I thought that these were all really great um, perspectives on marketing. And so what I did was I tried to take a piece from each one of these definitions and try to consolidate them down into one sentence, one succinct definition of, of what I believe marketing is and this is what I came up with. I believe marketing is educated communication directed at a specific audience, which leads that audience towards a desired action. So um, I just wanted to, I'm not saying this is the end all be all definition of marketing, but I wanted you guys to know what I believe marketing is so that, uh, that you know, you'll be able to better understand the things that I, I'm going to say throughout this presentation regarding marketing and how it relates to branding. Um, so what is branding? Well, to know what branding is, we need to know what a brand is. Um, if you haven't heard of, of a man named Marty Neumeyer, he, um, he's an older gentleman who's been around for a while uh, in the branding and design business. He basically wrote the book on branding. Um, 
according to Marty Neumeyer, your brand is not your logo. Uh, it's not your product. It's not a promise that your business is making. Marty Neumeyer says that your brand is a person's gut feeling about your business product or service. And this is um, one of the pretty much the most widely accepted definition of branding um, that's out there. Um, and you'll notice that your brand is not like a tangible thing. It's not something that you, you know, you, you'd pay some brand developer some money and he comes back to you two weeks and says, here, here's your brand. Here it is. Um, it, it's, it's not something that you can email somebody or upload to Google Drive. It's a, it's a gut feeling that people have about your business product or service. And um, what's interesting about that, you know, is that that's going to be a little bit different for every person, right? Um, and this is not probably a surprise to anybody. If you think about, you know, one of the most popular brands in the world, Apple, and, and you try to imagine what people's gut feeling is when they see the logo or they see a product or they see an ad. Um, we all know that there's there's pretty much two different, at least two different gut feelings that people have. Some people are super, you know, into Apple and they love the whole ecosystem. There are other people who are like, I couldn't care less about Apple. And so it's the same product. They saw the same ad, they see the same product, they see the same logo, the same website, but they're having different feelings inside about that. And so that's perfectly normal. You're never going to be able to get every single human on earth to have the same exact feeling about your business product or service, but you can absolutely take steps to influence that gut feeling as much as you can. Um, so your brand is, you know, it's your reputation, it's your vibe. You've probably heard the term, your vibe attracts your tribe. That is my favorite, uh, quote, I think. And I don't think it, when whoever came up with that probably wasn't thinking about branding when they came up with it. But in my opinion, it applies to branding um, quite well. That's that's the whole idea of branding is that you as a business, business owner, you have a certain vibe or you should, and you're trying to attract people to your to your vibe, right? You want people to, to purchase your product or service. Um, and in today's market, people are making purchasing decisions based a lot more on whether or not they vibe with the company versus the product. And the, one of the biggest reasons for that is it's so much easier to bring a product to market than it used to be. So there's tons of competition out there. For whatever product you want to buy, you probably have five different options and they're probably all good or at least good enough. And so you have to find some way to make a decision to choose between those options. And people are using, uh, they're making those decisions based on um, the brand, whether or not they jive, so to speak, with with the company or not. Um, so if that's what a brand is, and what is branding? Well, branding is simply the act of influencing that gut feeling. Um, like I said, you'll never be able to control it completely, but you can certainly influence it. Uh, I, somebody said, it was actually Marty Neumeyer again, he said that branding is about getting more people to buy more stuff for more years at a higher price, right? And so if all you're doing is marketing, you're going to get some people to buy some stuff for some amount of time for some price. And if you want to increase all those things, you need to also uh, be focusing on your brand. Um, so here's the, the sales funnel shenanigans I talked about. This is not going to be groundbreaking. You've probably all seen a sales funnel before, and this is about the most basic kind of sales funnel um, that you can see. But I, wanted, I just want to use this illustration to kind of talk about how branding can uh, improve your marketing. Um, so you have an audience and they're not even in your sales funnel yet. Your audience is basically just the people out there in the world. And you should have a target audience, right? Your target audience can't be the world. Nobody has that marketing budget. And that would be a huge waste of money anyways, because most of those people will never buy your product no matter what you say to them. So you have an audience and it should be a target audience. It should be a certain kind of person where you know this person is more likely to buy my product than this person. And so I'm going to do everything I can to market to that person. And um, some with some advertising mediums, that's easier than others. For instance, Facebook lets you get pretty specific with the kind of person that will see your ad. But if you're going to put up a billboard, you have no control over who sees that, right? Every single person who drives by that billboard is going to see it, whether they're, you know, your, your tribe or not. So certain advertising mediums will give you more options than others, but whenever you're creating your ads, you should always be trying to market to your specific target audience as much as you can. Because what's gonna happen is 
you're going to create an ad and you're going to send it out into the world. Let's say you send it out on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And some small fraction of this audience is going to see that ad. They're not all going to see that ad. Again, we don't have unlimited marketing budgets. Um, so some percentage of your target audience is going to see the ad that you just created and, and put out into the world. Some small percentage of the people who see the ad are going to interact with the ad. They're going to click on it or they're going to see the billboard and they're going to drive to your location, whatever, whatever action you're trying to get people to take. Some percentage of the people who see your ad are going to take that action. And then some small percentage of the people who engage with your ad uh, are actually going to convert. Um, they're going to you know, make a purchase or they're going to give you your, their email address, whatever it is you're trying to get them to do, they're going to do it. So if we remember our definition of marketing and, and if we agree with this definition that marketing is educated communication directed at a specific audience, which leads to a desired action, um, you're going to notice that if you put if you put some focus on your brand and when, before you even create your ad, if you're thinking in your mind about the kind of person you want to see your ad and that's influencing your design, it's influencing your copy, um, you're going to notice that you're going to get more of the right people uh, coming into your sales funnel. You're going to have the same number of people, if, assuming that we're using the same marketing budget, right? So you're going to get the same number of impressions from Facebook, you know, whatever, how, however much money you're putting in, they tell you, yeah, for that much money, we'll give you this many impressions. So you're going to get the same number of people seeing your ad, but hopefully the people who actually engage with your ad, um, the people who engage with it are going to be more likely to purchase your product because they are going to uh, jive with your vibe. They're going to be attracted to your brand. And so what branding does is branding sort of focuses on the quality of your leads versus the quantity, right? Quantity is, and I, I don't want to minimize marketing this way, but the quantity of leads just about comes down to how much money are you willing to, to put into marketing, right? If you give Facebook a thousand dollars, they'll give you this many impressions. If you give them $10,000, they'll give you way more impressions. You can almost just get however many, you know, leads as you want. The problem is most of those leads are going to be crap leads. You know, one example, I, I remember I took over a Google AdWords campaign for somebody and with Google AdWords, you can see what kind of websites your ad is showing up on. And this company sold conveyor belt parts, right? Like little machining parts for conveyor belts and whatnot for, for manufacturing uh, factories. And I noticed that their ads were showing up on um, like websites that were selling like toys to girls. So you know, some little girl would be looking at a website, you know, looking at Barbies or My Little Pony or whatever. And there'd be, there'd be an ad on that page for uh, conveyor belt parts. And how likely is, you know, how likely is a nine-year-old girl uh, to, to purchase a uh, conveyor belt part? Not very likely. So that was a waste of money. The fact that that ad was showing up on that page. Um, and that's just, a, that's kind of an extreme example, but that is a real life example of just wasting marketing dollars because they were showing their ads to the wrong people. And it's not always that stark of a, of an issue. Um, you know, but it's always an issue. You're always going to be showing your ads to people who are just, they have 0% chance of ever buying your product. And so the more you can, you can focus on trying to improve the quality of those leads and make sure that the right people are seeing your ad and interacting with your ad and being okay with the fact that some people just aren't going to jive. Um, that's fine. That's one problem that a lot of people get, get themselves into is they just, they can't stand the fact that there's some people out there who will just never buy their product no matter what. And they, they think that, you know, if I just, if I just write the best copy and I create the, the best graphic on this ad, everyone's going to want to buy the product. And that's simply not true. You just got to kind of accept the fact that you have a target audience and focus on that target audience. So um, how to build your brand. That is a, that is a, um, million dollar question that, that, that I can't tell you, I can't tell you how to do that in the next 45 minutes. I can certainly, um, offer some tips and provide some resources, but building your brand, learning how to build your brand is something that takes time. The good news is, however, that simply, simply trying is going to put you ahead of a lot of other businesses. If, if you take nothing from this presentation away 
but this one um this this one thing i'm about to say that's fine just just hear this and accept this you have a brand whether you think you do or not okay a lot of people think well let me just focus on the business and the product and and i'll focus on my brand you know later i saw someone on linkedin that says you shouldn't even you shouldn't even worry about your brand until you've been in business for five years. And that's kind of silly because what's going to happen is after five years, you're going to discover, oh, crap, I have a brand <laughs> and it's not a great one. Um, because if you remember that your brand is the person's gut feeling about your product, service or business, everyone's going to have some sort of gut feeling when they see your logo or your website or your product or your advertising. Um, and if you're not trying to influence that feeling from day one, you're going to you're going to just be setting yourself up for uh, either failure or just a lot of hard work later on down the line trying to rebrand. Nobody wants to have to rebrand. Um, you know, that, that just takes work and, and money. And, and uh, it's much easier as a business owner to, to start focusing on your brand on day one. Even if and I'm not saying you have to hire a brand strategist on day one. Uh, you just need to be thinking about your brand. Everything you do from, from creating advertisements to hiring people to deciding what uh, materials to, to source for your product, everything, every decision you make in your business, you should be thinking, is this decision on brand or is it off brand? And if it's off brand, you probably shouldn't make that decision, All right? So there's four things that we'll talk about um, briefly here uh, that you should be thinking about as a business owner. Um, and the first is the foundation. The foundation of your brand is your your company's mission, your vision, your goals, uh, you're basically trying to define the why, how, what, and who, right? You know, some people, their why is literally, they just want to make money. They saw an opportunity, some product that they felt like would do well in the market and they took it to market and it's doing well and they're making money. That's it. But um, a lot of people go into business with more reasons than simply trying to make a bunch of money. Uh, one example near where I live is a company called Ecolips. They make um, lip balm. And as you can probably tell by the name Ecolips, they're they're very um, ecologically uh, conscious. They're very much um, concerned about environmental sustainability. And so, you know, down to the, the point where the little plastic tubes that the lip balm comes in, those are like not plastic. They're like some kind of biodegradable plastic alternative, which is quite a bit more expensive than plastic. They could save a lot of money if they would just buy plastic, but that's just not who they are. That's not what they're, you know, that's not, that would be very off brand for them to, to buy plastic for these lip balms, knowing that that plastic is going to end up in a landfill and it's not going to, it's not going to degrade. So they spend extra money, which cuts into their profits to purchase this biodegradable material for, for their lip balm. And so that's a perfect example of, of a decision that they made that was on brand with their company's uh, mission, their vision, and their goals. Um, the second thing you should be thinking about is your brand's personality. So what is or are your brand's values? Um, what are What is the culture of your company? Uh, what are the attributes of your brand? If you're wondering what that means, think about, you know, if somebody was to describe your business, would they say that, you know, would they say that it's a credible business? Would they say it's unique? Would they say it's relevant? Is it consistent? Um, there's, you can, if you just Google brand attributes, you'll, you'll see a whole long list of possible brand attributes. And it's, it's a good idea for you to know what those are. Now, now nine out of 10 times, your brand's personality is going to be very similar to your own personal personality, right? And so this, this part shouldn't be super hard for you to figure out, but, um, it's a good idea to, to Google brand attributes and just try to circle five that you think apply to your business, you know, more than, than the rest and keep those in mind when you're, um, you know, hiring people, when you're creating ads, things like that. Um, and then what are the benefits of, of your brand versus others? And what is your brand's tone of voice? If you want a good example of, of a brand that has a tone of voice, uh, go look at Wendy's Twitter account. Um, they, they're hilarious. I mean, they just go out there and they roast people, mostly other fast food restaurants, but sometimes they roast uh, just regular Twitter users. Um, and they're not, you know, mean spirited about it. It's pretty funny, um, you, you know, but some people might not like it and some people will. And they know that they're, 
their Twitter is very different from most companies' Twitters. Most companies' Twitters are very just, you know, bland and boring and professional, whatever. And Wendy's will go out there and and just roast McDonald's in, in hilarious ways. So so Wendy's certainly has a, a tone of voice um, that's different from, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, whatever. Um, and you you want to not be focusing too much on this on visual traits yet. Um, ideally, you want to be considering these four things that we're going over before you create a logo or a website, things like that. Although I understand that most people probably are already past that step, and that's fine. I'm I'm not saying you have to try to redesign your logo or anything, but if you're just thinking about starting a business or you're working with a client who's going to start a business, you want to try to get all this stuff you know, kind of figured out before you start creating the visual aspects of the brand or the, the visual brand identity. Um, third thing is you should be trying to figure out who your target audience is. Uh, you remember uh, part of our definition of marketing was it is educated communication. Um, you need to be figuring out who you're marketing to. Um, who is most likely to buy your product and who is not likely to buy your product. Um, You probably want to try and use this information to create something called a customer persona. Sometimes it's called a customer avatar. Uh, There's a bunch of different names for it. If you want a really great example of, of of a very talented design agency working with a client to create customer personas, uh, check out this video. Um, I don't know if how you would, just search for um, building a brand by a, a YouTube channel called The Future. The word "future" without the e on the end, because um, it's you know it's hip to misspell words. Um, look up The Future and look up the video series called "Building a Brand." It's a whole series where they they just walk you through the entire process of rebranding a brewery in California, and it's just fantastic. It's it, anybody who's interested in branding or trying to learn more about branding should watch that whole series. In this particular episode, there's one whole episode that's all about uh, creating a couple uh, brand personas for this brewery. And you actually end up creating uh, made up people. You give them a name, you you, you give them an age, you you give them an education. You're you're basically creating a whole fake person that, that you think is the kind of person who would buy your product. And there, you couldn't have two or three, you could have you could, I don't know, you could maybe have four or five, but you should at least probably have two or three. Um, in the case of this, this brewery, you know, they had, they had a, a, like a stay at home mom who, who liked the atmosphere of hanging out in breweries. And they had like a beer fanatic who just really likes all kinds of beers. They had um, a beer snob who only likes certain kinds of beers. Uh, and so there's, you know, and all three of those people are very different. And you could market to each one of those people in different ways, but they're all part of their target audience. So that's why it's important to have two or three different customer personas because, you know, you might want to put out a, a marketing campaign to the stay-at-home mom that really likes the, the brewery atmosphere and wants to get out of the house and just go hang out and, and drink a beer. That ad might be a little bit different than the ad that you would show to a beer snob where you're saying, hey, we have really good craft beers that nobody else has. You should come check it out. So, you, you know, those are going to be two different kinds of advertisements. And so you, you probably want your marketing department to, you know, push three different marketing campaigns, each one targeting the different kind of persona. And it's easier for them to do that when you have the persona and, and that persona has a name. You're like, all right, today I'm going to create an ad for, you know, Steven. That's the, that's the person who's the beer snob. And then tomorrow I'm going to create a, a you know, uh, an advertising campaign for Stacy. That's a stay at home mom. So it's just easier to, to create those marketing campaigns. If you have an actual person in your mind and after a while, that person becomes real, you made them up, but after a while you start to think that's a real person and I'm creating this ad for Stacy. Right. Um, but definitely check out that, the whole video series again, it's called building a brand and, uh, by a a YouTube channel called The Future. The last thing is a gap analysis. So you want to compare, you know, where you are today and how your customers uh, perceive you with how you would like to be, right? Where do you want to be? How do you want your customers to perceive you? Is that the same as where you are today? Um, If the answer is yes, great. If the answer is no, you got some work to do. 
Um, do a competitive analysis, come up with a value proposition and a positioning statement. Those two things are, um, I didn't make those up. Those are pretty common things in the, in the marketing world. So highly recommend, uh, you know, do some Google search for how to create a value proposition, how to create a, a positioning statement. Those will be very helpful. Um, and then a competitive analysis, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be super formal competitive analysis, but you should be looking at your competitors. And one really good thing to do is to go to your competitor's social media or anywhere where there's reviews, get on Google reviews, look at your competitors, five-star reviews and look at your competitors, one-star reviews. What do people love about your competitor and what do people hate about your competitor? And that'll give you a pretty good idea of how you could possibly stand out uh, from your competition. So I talked a little faster than I wanted. I was hoping to have like maybe 10 minutes at the end for questions. Um, I kind of blew through this presentation in about a half an hour. So hopefully I didn't talk too fast for you guys. Um, here's before we get to the questions, I just want to show you a quick list of resources. Um, so Finian is the name of an agency that a guy named Fabian Geierhalter, um, I'm going to put his name in the chat here. Fabian Geierhalter. Um, so he's he's done a lot of really good stuff um, regarding branding. That's kind of his whole, uh, everything he does is all about branding. Finian is the name of his, his company. Um, so that's where you can go to find some books and things that he's written. I recommend um, checking out his books. I also recommend just doing a YouTube search for Fabian Geierhalter, he's done a lot of presentations over the years where he talks about branding in some very practical uh, ways. Yeah, I'm working on some links um, to, to apply branding to your business. Um, he's, he's a little bit younger than Marty New, Newmeyer, so he, he, he doesn't maybe have as much experience as Marty, but he's, he, he knows what he's talking about, and he brings maybe a little bit of a, a fresher, more modern uh, take to the the world of branding than, than maybe marty does um here's a link to the futures youtube channel um the next one on the list is the future which i just shared a link to so the future is run by a guy named chris doe and uh he again he's the younger guy um but he is super smart and he's an absolute student of of people like marty newmeyer um, he's just a fantastic designer who, who moved into the world of branding um, and his his agency. I mean, we're talking he's he's the kind of agency that is charging, you know, half a million dollars to build websites and do videos for people. He's he's very good at what he does and people are are willing to give him a lot of money to do what he does. And his YouTube channel is fantastic. He basically. um the whole channel is, is all about helping you build and grow your creative business. So if you're a, a graphic designer, if you're a web developer or whatever, um, he just has so many good videos that talk about things like how to price your things, uh, your services, um, how to position yourself. There's the whole building a brand um, playlist I mentioned, which I'm going to share a link to. Oops. Um, it's just it's just a fantastic channel that that has really helped me to grow my business. Um, you know, going from building websites for, I think I've built websites for five hundred dollars. Um, to my last two clients um, were each twenty thousand dollar clients. So I owe a lot of that that growth to this channel, um, the future. And then there's Marty Newmeyer who I mentioned. He's written some really good books. Written, sorry, some really good books, and they're not super long. He actually said that he his goal was to write some books that you could read like on an airplane on your way to a business meeting summer or something like that. Um, and so they're, they're, they're not really long. Um, they're pretty short, but they're, they're full of some really good stuff. The brand gap and Zag were two of my favorites. Um, definitely check those out. And then um, the last one uh, is just my podcast. I did about seven episodes of a podcast called a load of BS uh, with a friend of mine named Sarah. And then there was a couple episodes where we had guests, uh, local business owners, um, serial entrepreneurs who talk about their perspective on branding. Um, and I really, I would definitely check out those two episodes. One is with um, Eric Engelman and the others with Steve Shriver. And it's, it's mostly them talking uh, about their experience 
um, starting several successful businesses and getting their perspective on uh, what brand is and how they worked to build their brand. So it's very, very insightful stuff. Um, yeah, I'm going to see if I can work on a couple more uh, links here to put in the chat. And then uh, I'm just scrolling through the chat to see if there's any questions here. Adrian loves shenanigans. Me too. <laughs> I'm actually just going to jump in here. I was going to ask if, um, because uh, you have a lot of content in the deck. If you can send, just email me the PDF. And what I can do is I can actually upload that to the recording of this webinar on the Zoom platform. Uh, and that'll just make it easy so for everybody that wants to go through the deck again and see all the names and all the associated resources that you provided, uh, they can be they'll be able to do that. Awesome. Yeah, I will definitely do that. And I'm I'm grabbing the link to that specific video um, to that that walks you through creating customer personas because I think I think that's important and it's difficult to do. I'll be honest, I'm not that great at it. Anytime I'm going to try to create a customer persona, I rewatch this video first. <laughs> Um, just to give myself kind of a little refresher, because um, it really is a, a little bit of a skill. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to like, uh, at least in at least in my experience, when um, like when we created ours, for example, for Groundhog, um, we really it, it it's kind of a mix of you know you start off with an idea, you start off with a product, you start off you know just doing something and selling something, and sort of just like whoever comes along and buys it and buys it or works with you and works with you. Uh, and then you do that for a little while, just sort of ad hoc without the like the customer profile thing, right? And then you get to a point where it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm working with a whole bunch of different people. Who do I like to work with most, right? And so that's how it sort of evolved, at least in, in, in my experiences. We didn't start off with, we're only going to do agencies. We actually started off with just like something super general, just like small businesses that use WordPress. It doesn't really matter who they are, mm -hmm. right? E-commerce, publishers, writers agencies like just everybody uh and then about a year and a half ago we really refocused um when we started learning about okay well what's the brand what's the customer profile and that way you know once it and it took about a year and a half for us to get to that point right so it's hard to start off at the really beginning like you don't know what you don't know right like you create a customer profile and then you know, you, you do a whole bunch of marketing and then all of a sudden, you know, that customer profile actually doesn't want or need or whatever your product. So it's also important to know that you can pivot as well. Because again, we started off with just like small businesses that use WordPress. And then we later pivoted to like agencies that implement WordPress is actually a really, really attractive audience for us that we resonate really, really well with. So you can always change later too. Yeah, for sure. And if, if you watch that video, you'll see that they're, they're taking a business that's already been in business and it's actually successful. And they they just they want to rebrand. And so they're creating their customer personas based on a lot of data that they already have, having been in business already and having already made sales. So if you're starting a brand new business, like you said, you could be you could create two or three personas and find out six months later that oh, we got we're gonna get rid of Stacy and come up with a new one based on, on what we've seen. Turns out Stacy doesn't like our product. So um absolutely you always gotta be ready to to um pivot and do what you got to do. And it's, and there is a huge difference between trying to do all this stuff on day one before you've made a single sale and then trying to do all this stuff later, um, you know, when you've been in business for two years already. Um, so absolutely be ready, be ready to pivot. Don't be afraid to change things. It's okay. If you're, if you have that attitude going in through day one, then you can avoid having to go through a large change in five years. It's okay to make small incremental changes as you go based on the data that you're receiving than to operate the same way for five years and go, oh crap, we need to make we need to make a lot of big changes. Absolutely. Uh, we actually have a couple of questions. So we have a question uh, we have a question from Michael and Michael is asking, do you have a few tips for connecting emotionally with people with uh, with your audience? Yeah, I think the biggest my biggest advice on that would be um, to to be true to who you are personally. I mentioned earlier that nine out of 10 times your brand's personality is going to be the same as your personality. Um, I think it'd be very difficult to manage a business that had a different personality from your own. So pour yourself into your business and that, that vibe is going to attract 
a certain tribe. You're going to naturally start to have the, the kind of customers who, and they're not all going to be exactly like you, uh, right? You're not going to be just having a bunch of clones of yourself buying your product, but you're going to be able to connect with these people emotionally if you're authentic and you're not trying to fake it. Um, I mentioned the company earlier that that is very environmentally conscious. It would be very difficult if you yourself didn't really care about the environment, but you were just trying to run a business that was environmentally sustainable because you just thought that's what people wanted. That would be difficult. You would probably come across as not authentic. It would you could maybe fake it successfully for a while, but somebody somewhere is going to out you. Um, they're going to see you, you know, driving around in your Hummer or something and be like, wait a minute, this guy owns a business and claims that he cares about, you know, it's just going to come across as not authentic and people aren't going to want to connect with you. But if you're being authentic and true to who you are, and that's coming through your business, it's going to be very easy to connect with your customers um, emotionally. And the hard part is as your business grows, when it's, when it's just you, it, that's easier to pour yourself into the business. Um, eventually, you might get to the point where you have a marketing department. And now you're pouring yourself into your marketing department and you're hoping that they're representing the business in the way that you would like them to. And as, the more your business grows, the more difficult it can be to make sure that your vision is being communicated throughout the whole company and then being communicated to the customers. And it becomes harder for you to connect with customers directly um, so it's, that's another reason why I think it's very important to be focused on your brand from day one. And when you decide to bring on partners, when you decide to hire people, you hire a director of marketing, you should be thinking about your brand when you make those decisions, because those people are going to be connecting with your customers, uh, more than you are now. It's also important to be consistent with your brand, right? So you're saying be authentic and you have to be authentically and consistent, right? Yeah, if, there's, if you're... If you're not consistent in the message, then then that also creates uh, uh, discon not discontinuity. What is it? Dis <sighs> distrust, maybe. Not distrust. What's the dissonance? Oh yeah, it creates cognitive dissonance. So yeah, if be consistent you, too. If your website, if the brand of your website is different from the brand of your Facebook, is different from the YouTube videos you put out, whatever. Um, that's going to be a problem. You definitely want to make sure that you're consistent throughout all your various mediums and just consistent from day to day. You don't want, yeah. you know, your brand today to be, you know, completely different than it was a month ago. That's just going to confuse people and you're not going to be attracting a tribe. You're not going to get that loyalty. Your goal should be Apple like loyalty. Those people will wait in line for two days to get the new Apple iPhone, right? That loyalty isn't because. The, of the hardware of the phone, right? The hardware of the phone is the same as Samsung, whatever, all these other smartphones. They all have very nice cameras, very nice processors, blah, blah, blah. But nobody's waiting in line for two days for a Samsung phone. <laughs> nobody's doing that. But these people will wait two days outside for an Apple iPhone because they have resonated with that brand so much. And Apple figured that game out a long time ago, and they are pretty much the king of branding. So that should be your goal. One of the biggest goals of branding is to build loyalty because getting a customer is great, but getting a customer to continue buying from you for years is even better. We have a question from Martez who's asking, because marketing agencies are often sort of like all like one trick or not one trick ponies, but like jack of all trades rather, the absolute, the absolute opposite of one trick pony, the jacks of all trades and they're usually required for so much. Like, how do you, when working with clients or talking to clients and, and saying, hey, you know, I'd like to, to offer services for brand strategy, how do you make the case or how do you sell the fact that they need brand strategy as a service and not bundle it in with sort of all of the other services you're already doing? How do you make a case to sell it as a separate service? So, you, you know, because it's, it's, a, it's a valuable service and it should be worth more. Yeah, that is a, that is a um, very difficult sell for a couple of reasons. One, a lot of people still don't really see the value in branding. So first you have to convince them that there's even value to uh, putting some effort into the brand strategy. Um, and the other thing is branding is fairly difficult to track the uh, return on investment from, right? 
So with just with just marketing, you can create a marketing campaign and you can say, well, I put $1,000 into this marketing campaign and it generated $6,000 worth of sales. That's a fantastic ROI, whatever. But with branding, it's not so, so easy to track. And so it's a little more difficult to, um, to sell because you like to say, marketers can say, well, I took over this company's marketing campaign and I increased their marketing ROI from 6% to 12%, whatever. Um, and so they can say, oh, that's really great. I want you to do the same for my business. But for branding, it's, it's much more difficult to, to track that. I would say that the way to track brand uh, outcome or branding strategy outcome would be with NPS, net promoter score. Um, and, and so there'd be a little bit more like, it's a little bit more of a process to, to get that information because you have to be consistently communicating with, with the company's customers, but you could definitely sort of show some sort of result through NPS. Like, you know, how would you rate one to 10 your experience with our customer support? Or how would you like, how likely are you to recommend our service to a colleague or a friend, right? Like those would be in those those numbers on like a one to 10 rating scale or like a stars rating scale would probably be indicative of like brand strategy outcome. Yeah. And, and one thing that I like to, to do is um, there is a lot of data out there that talks about uh, what is driving people's purchase decisions and how does that compare to, you know, 20 years ago. And I, I alluded to this earlier, um, you know, back in our parents' generation, I'm, th- I'm, 38. So like back when my dad was in his twenties, people would purchase products based on the product. They didn't care about marketing. They didn't care about the fancy advertising commercials. They didn't care about the company. They said, look, I need this widget. I need this widget to do this and this. Your widget does that. I'm going to buy it. That was it. Today, it's like I said, it's completely different because today you have five different widgets to choose from. So people are making their decisions based a lot more on the actual company. And it can be stupid things like they go to your website and they don't like the look of the website. Next, they're moving on to the next one, right? And so you can use that data. You can you can do those Google searches and find that real data that talks about how people are, are making purchasing decisions because that's what the, your clients are going to care about. Your client wants to know, how can I convince these people to buy my product. And you can say, well, you need a good product for sure. Otherwise, all the other products are, are going to be better than yours. But assuming that your product is just as good as the other products, you're going to need to stand out in some other way. And, and your brand is that way. So if you can convince them of the importance of branding by tying it to dollars, by saying, look, if you focus on your brand, you can stand out and you can get, uh, you can make more money because more people are going to buy your product versus your competitor, um, then you can move from there to talk about, you know, some branding. And, and there's kind of two strategies. Some people will, will just sell branding as a standalone service. You know, Fabian Geierhalter, who I mentioned uh, earlier, who runs Finian. He, last I heard, he, he offers the brand strategy session. It's one eight-hour session. He'll fly out to your business for one day and and strategize he's not even providing any deliverables you're not getting a logo or a website it's just strategizing about your brand for eight hours and last i heard he charged twelve thousand dollars for that so you can do that uh but the other the other strategies you could work it into a full sort of package you can say look you came to me because you wanted a, a, a website um you know, we're going to, we're going to get you a website. We're going to get you a logo. We're going to help you with your business cards. We're going to help you with your Facebook graphics, uh, your messaging. Uh, but before we do all that, we need to sit down and, and strategize because if we just, if we just, we can come up with a pretty logo and a pretty website, but if it doesn't resonate with the right people, it's going to be a waste of your money. So, you know, this is going to be a $30,000 package. You're going to get the website, the logo, everything you wanted, and it's going to actually mean something and it's going to be effective. And we're going to take at least eight hours before we start clicking any pixels on a computer to figure out who your target audience is, what's your brand's persona, what what are the attributes of your brand, et cetera, et cetera, so that your logo and your website and your Facebook and everything is as effective as it can be. I think, I think that's a good suggestion. Uh, so Matez, I, I hope that helps you. Another option that I was sort of just thinking about while you were sharing 
is you could, uh, if you want to sell it, like if you're already doing work and you want to then tackle the brand of that business for let's by adding value to the contract, let's say you can just ask them or, or open with the question. And it's like, number one, what's your brand? If they don't know, well, then that's your in. Number two, uh, if they, if they have a brand idea in their mind, then you can follow that up with, okay, well, then what's your NPS, right? Or what's your net promoter score? Like how effective is that brand in actually creating business? Um, and that, cause that's what the net promoter score tells you. And if they don't have that number, then it's like, all right, well, that's where we start. And then you can work with them to create a strategy to not only learn what their current net promoter score is, but improve it through brand strategy. So those would be another couple options for you as well. Absolutely. Uh, and we have the, uh, we have the video there for Zola. Awesome. Wonderful. Do we have any other questions for James? When is it better to differentiate yourself from your service? Uh, I'm I'm going to defer to you. I'm, I'm I'm not sure what the context or, or or how to best understand that question. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, differentiate yourself from your service. So, are you, maybe you're talking about like, um, for instance, my my business is called Apex Branding and Design, but I my friend who's who's the graphic designer that I hire almost all the time for graphic design work. His his name is Devin Green and his business name is Devin Green. And so there's kind of two different strategies there. He's going for more of a personal brand. It's all about him. When you hire Devin Green, you're getting Devin Green. For me, I'm going more of an agency kind of uh, strategy. Um, yeah, like your brand being your name versus a business name. Okay, so I think I'm on the right track. I think, honestly, I think that is kind of a personal preference. I think so if you're like me, I'm not really great at anything. And so it would be foolish of me to try to say, like, I am the best web developer. You should hire me over any other web developer. Or I'm the best graphic designer, et cetera, et cetera. I'm better at getting the right people together to offer a full service package. Look, I'm not going to, if you hire me, I'm not going to design your logo. That would be terrible for you. I'm going to hire Devin to do it because he's a really great graphic designer. And so if you're going to focus on one sort of thing, if you're a really good graphic designer, it, it might behoove you to go more of that personal brand um, because that's the one thing that you do. You're really, really good at it. And so you want your name out there. Um, but if you're, if you're like me and you're kind of going for more of a general full service type thing where, where I'm not really doing all the work, I'm, I'm hiring other people to do the work. I think that would just feel weird if I was, if I was branding myself as James Welbus. And they're like, well, you're not doing any of the work. You're just hiring other people to do the work. Um, so, but at the end of the day, I think it's, you know, that's my advice, but I think it comes down to personal preference. You know, my buddy Devin could come up with a business name and stop using his personal name. And I think he would still do just fine. But I think what he's doing is really working for himself. Yeah, brand is definitely personality, 100%, Brandon. Um, so you can still, I can still, um, you know, try to propagate my personality through the personality of my business. Um, because I am still at this stage of the business, I'm still the one talking to the customers. I'm the one doing sales calls and sitting down and, and uh, strategizing. And then when it comes time to, to design a logo, that's when I bring Devin in, or if somebody needs video, that's when I bring Fred in. Um, so it's at this point in my business, it's still very much me as the face of the business, even though I'm not using my name in the business. Um, as the company grows, like I said before, it will become a little more difficult for me to connect with the customers in that way. But I would like to think that if I get to the point where I'm hiring, you know, salespeople, that I'll hire the right salespeople who who they will jive with my vibe, and so they'll be able to uh, jive with my customers as well. All righty. Uh, last chance for questions, and then we're going to wrap up the session, and then we have two more sessions starting at one o'clock. Who Who's is my... your ideal customer? <laughs> yeah, that's um, someone who needs brand strategy. <laughs> yeah, 
I so everybody talks about the importance of of a niche, and I do think that it it can be important. Um, I don't care so much about what the industry my client is in as I do about um, just the client's personality. And what I've discovered, and this is going to sound maybe kind of basic, but um, the higher paying a client is, the easier they are to work with, which sounds weird because you would imagine if they're paying a lot of money that they're going to be a lot more concerned and micromanagey about what their money is doing. But that is exactly the opposite of what I've experienced over the past seven years. When I do a, a website for a client, because I'm feeling generous and you know I build somebody a website for three, $4,000, that client is much more likely to be a pain in my neck than the client who is paying me $20,000. So this is going to sound kind of lame, but my ideal customer is, is somebody who has money and understands the value of the services that I provide and is willing to to pay me what uh, those services are worth um, because their clients are just so much easier to work with. It's a pleasure to work with those people. Uh, it's a lot more work. It's bigger projects, which we all want bigger projects. So there's that obvious benefit. But to me, the biggest benefit is, is the client interaction versus, you know, just having a big, a big job that pays a lot of money. So, and that's the problem is a lot of people, I used to spend a lot of time trying to sell people on my services and then I would find out if I managed to convince them to hire me, then they'd be a pain in the neck to work with. And so I'm to the point now where somebody calls me and says, hey, I heard you do websites. I say, yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, our websites start at $5,000 for a basic website. That's like the first thing that comes out of my mouth because I know that 90% of them are going to go, oh, well, I was kind of thinking more like $500. Yeah, I understand that. Have a nice day and move on because I'm not, I'm not looking for those customers. I'm not going to see, I don't want to have to see you and try to to, to beat people into submission and convince them that they need the services that I offer. If they don't already think that they need the services I offer, they should be talking to somebody else. All righty. That, be, that being said, my two largest clients so far have been county governments. So that might be my niche. <laughs> <laughs> hey, government gigs are good gigs. They are. Government gigs are solid gigs. Yeah. We, uh, we do a lot of government, government, governments, you know, they, they got the money. <laughs> they do. I will, it's, it's not, it's nice to get government gigs because it's just ours. It's our money. <laughs> yeah, right. Just get some of that money back. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much for spending the last uh, 53 minutes of your time with us, James. I really appreciate it. This is actually the first time that, that we've met and have collaborated on thing. And we hope to have you as part of a Groundhog Day event in the future. Thank you, uh, all the attendees, for showing up and sharing with us your time. It's really appreciated, and it totally validates this entire process. So thank you. 